I'm going to ask you essentially like the theme question for this discussion. I'm, I'm probably going to ask Mr. Idowa as well. In, in your own opinion and based on your experience, what does it take to do large scale development? Mm. Um, well, um, as Yemi said, I mean, you have to be able to dream. Um, you have to understand your market, understand your product, um, understand um, the challenges that you're about to face. I mean, I think, you know, we have the same problems as developers all around the world, but then we have this intangible, this Nigeria factor and the way we do things here. And um, I know we're always talking about our environments. Some of the things are good, some of the things are bad, but you really, I think the most important thing is to understand um, the way things are done in Nigeria and to be able to innovate and think about how to finance your, how to sell, um, how to deal with regulators, how to deal with the government. Um, so I think I've jumped around a little bit, but what, um, if I was going to go through a roadmap of what you needed to do, I would say, understand the market, do the research and understand your addressable market and who really, who's going to buy your product. Ensure that the product is what the market wants. Understand um, how you're going to do the product in the most efficient, most economical way. Understand and don't be too ambitious on your profits. Um, know your regulators and know the government. Amass the best team you can afford in terms of consultants, contractors, the people that will work with you, and then just go out and do it. All right. Thank you so much. So, Yemi, I'm going to ask you the same question, but I'm going to ask you in a different way. All right. So, again, every now and then I meet a young developer that, you know, just sells again, like you said, he has a vision. Yeah, she has a dream and you know they typically always you know just kind of like to demonstrate how good and how well they want to do like i say they, they often say so i'm going to do it like yemi do you know you you, you 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 hear that phrase a lot like yemi do it's a, it's a phrase by the way sir just in case you didn't know you know so what does it take to do large-scale development like yemi do so i think uh uh, Yinka has answered it very well. But what I will do is I'll perhaps the lecturer side of me, um, you know, maybe perhaps explain it. Um, I'll come from a different angle. And that is that if, if you're going to do any business, whether it's selling to my selling, it is an enterprise. And as a result of an enterprise, you have to engage enterprise risk. And then you break the enterprise risk into three primary uh, types of risk. Market risk, operational risk, and financial risk. And then I, I try to give you a picture of like an onion. And you, you have layers of risk that you must peel over. And you must understand that there's a global or systemic risk that you must engage, which in this case will be Nigerian, the Nigerian factor. And then as you come lower, you start having to engage the internal risks that are specific to the project itself. Your ability to identify the risk of every endeavor of your enterprise will determine your um, rate of success. So you must also apportion risk proportionally, um, uh, you know, assign factors of risk to each one and obviously your total risk is um, the um, the enterprise risk versus the amount of money you put determines the kind of profit you get so when she said that they're not getting what she said but be realistic with your um, profits and i see people very beautiful drawings and they put two emphasis on the drawings and they put too much emphasis on, oh, we've got this, we've got this. They don't look, don't look at how those other risks are very important. And such that when you now start skewing your formula, sometimes long term is better. Sometimes short term is better. It depends on where you're coming from. If I have a small amount of money, I can go ahead and quickly 
do something fast, roll it over and go to the next thing. Or I take that small amount of money, I leverage it, and then I lose all the money, I'm out of business. So uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I'll give you, I'm one of the first people I ever said before I'm to sit. And actually I do get those questions when people ask this. And even on Orange Island, people also ask me questions. And they don't understand that when the history of Nigeria is being written, the people on this panel for Orange Island and Eco Atlantic City are going to be part of Nigerian history. For Eco Atlantic City, when you're doing history in future, this is going to be a lecture. Orange Island is going to be a lecture. People are going to sit down in uh, engineering class, going to look at case studies, and you're going to have Orange Island as a case study. Eco, Eco Atlantic City is going to be a case study. We need to understand that this is a process. If, if you're trying to market uh, a property to somebody, you, you don't say, look, you buy and sell and you make profit. No, it's the other way around. It's more of a defensive thing. It's a store of wealth. It's a store of value for you. You key in and you slowly, you know, number one, against inflation, and you slowly build your wealth on that basis. So even if they don't deliver the property to you, you know, now cook the food, cook the food, your money is in the property. There's, you know, you go there every day, I hydrate every night. By the way, thank you for the stickers. I've got stickers now, so I can go to a different high city. And you see every day there's something going on. And from the, the, the commoditization of property in Nigeria is the unfortunate reason why we're not able to do large scale products. So to go back to your um, question properly and you know to answer that, people have to understand that you don't treat it like a And this, I'll, I'll make this very important point. When someone says, I bought a property for 12 million naira and I've sold it for 40 million naira, that is full gold. Yeah. Because 40 million naira, you walk up and down everywhere you can only buy the same thing you just sold for 40 million naira probably even you pay more so when you go to Atlantic city invest your money in there as a store of wealth go to sleep go to orange island invest your money go to sleep stop disturbing them the only time you panic is if you get there you see the security man there you know with toothpick and you know nothing is going on there you know you have a problem but when you professionals behind it you see the investment is going on. It's a long-term project. If you want somewhere to live, go out, go to Lekki Phase 1, buy a property, and move in there and live in there. But the for me, when I'm doing large scale projects, I, I take this market risk into consideration. I make sure that I deal with people who have short-term goals and objectives, I can deliver to them. I, I look for people who have long-term objectives that I can key into and support me. And technically, they're your strategic partners. So when I did uh, Northern Falls Shore, there were many people that wanted to buy one plot, two plot. I refused. I went to look for an anchor off-taker. And when I got the off-taker, that was it. And so the, the situation now in Nigeria is that we, we need to, I mean, change the mindset and this webinar is the reason I came on this webinar was it would be it would be an opportunity for me to actually for the first time speak to a much more technical and more knowledgeable audience to try and explain you know this business of commoditization of property has to stop because you have to do, use the building block uh, method you know when you have large development as building block large developments overall you have a better city and then people key in off that so if i go to america today i go into new york i can buy a property and build a standalone property i'll finish it in two months but i forget that somebody else has built that place over 100 years so what is happening now is that you're having a quarter city coming up and they're building up and they're providing the infrastructure they're providing all the support services which in future, somebody's going to turn up and he'll come and do a development in 12 months and say, oh, I did it in 12 months. But if somebody's built over 12 years, 15 years, and it's put together an infrastructure that you can benefit from. So that, I, is, I was stop there, but that is 
one of the things which I think will answer the question you presented to me.